A cataphract was a form of armored heavy cavalry used in ancient warfare by a number of peoples in Western Eurasia and the Eurasian steppe. The word in English is derived from the Greek, kappa alpha tau alpha phi rho alpha kappa tau omicron sigma cataphractis, literally meaning armored or completely enclosed. Historically, the cataphract was a very heavily armored horseman, with both the rider and steed draped from head to toe in scale armor, while typically wielding a contest or lance as their weapon. Cataphracts served as either the elite cavalry or assault force for most empires and nations that fielded them, primarily used for impetuous charges to break through infantry formations chronicled by many historians from the earliest days of antiquity up until the High Middle Ages. They are believed to have influenced the later European knights, via contact with the Byzantine Empire. Notable peoples and states deploying cataphracts at some point in their history include the Scythians, Sarmatians, Parthian army, Achaemenid army, Sarkas, Armenian army, Seleucids, Pergamenes, the Sassanid army, the Roman army, the Goths and the Byzantine army. In several cases the term is used to denote a Parthian chariot. In the West, the fashion for heavily armored Roman cavalry seems to have been a response to the eastern campaigns of the Parthians and Sassanids in the region, referred to as Asia Minor, as well as numerous defeats at the hands of cataphracts across the steppes of Eurasia, the most notable of which is the Battle of Cara. Traditionally, Roman cavalry was neither heavily armored nor all that effective. The Roman equites score were composed mainly of lightly armored horsemen bearing spears and swords to chase down stragglers and to rout enemies. The adoption of cataphract-like cavalry formations took hold amongst the late Roman army during the late 3rd and 4th centuries. The Emperor Gallienus Augustus and his general and would-be user Perioriolus bear much of the responsibility for the institution of Roman cataphract contingents in the late Roman army though this had been questioned by some historians. Etymology The genesis is undoubtedly Greek. Cataphractus is composed of the Greek root words kappa alpha tau alpha, a preposition, and phi rho alpha kappa tau omicron sigma, covered, protected, which is interpreted along the lines of fully armored, or closed from all sides. The term first appears substantively in Latin, in the writings of Cicenus. Laura Cartos, quos cataphractos vocant, meaning, the armored, whom they call cataphract. There appears to be some confusion about the term in the late Roman period, as armored cavalry men of any sort that were traditionally referred to as equites in the Republican period later became exclusively designated as cataphracts. Vegetius, writing in the 4th century, described armor of other sort as cataphracts, which at the time of writing would have been either Larica segmentata or Larica hamata. Aminus Marcellinus, Roman soldier and historian of the 4th century, mentions the cataphract or equites, the cataphract cavalry which they regularly call clibonaria. Clibonaria is a Latin word for mail-clad riders, itself a derivative of the Greek Kappa lambda iota beta alpha nu omicron phi omicron rho omicron iota clibana foroi, meaning camp haven bearers, from the Greek word kappa lambda iota beta alpha nu omicron sigma, meaning camp haven, or metallic furnace. The word has also been tentatively linked to the Persian word for a warrior, gripan. However, it appears with more frequency in Latin sources than in Greek throughout antiquity. A twofold origin of the Greek term has been proposed, either that it was a humorous reference to the heavily armored cataphracts as men encased in armor who would heat up very quickly much like in an oven, or that it was further derived from the old Persian word asterisk rubana, itself composed of the Iranian roots griva panabara, which translates into neck guard wearer. Roman chroniclers and historians Arian, Elian and Asclepiodotus use the term cataphract in their military treatises to describe any type of cavalry with either partial or full horse and rider armor. 
The Byzantine historian Leo Diaconus calls them pi alpha mu sigma iota delta eta rho omicron upsilon sigma pi pi omicron tau alpha sigma pan sideros ipotas, which would translate as fully iron-clad knights. There is, therefore, some doubt as to what exactly cataphracts were in late antiquity, and whether or not they were distinct from Clybenaria. Some historians theorize that cataphracts and Clybenaria were one and the same type of cavalry, designated differently simply as a result of their divided geographical locations and local linguistic preferences. Cataphract like cavalry under the command of the Western Roman Empire, where Latin was the official tongue, always bore the Latinized variant of the original Greek name, cataphractarii. The cataphract like cavalry stationed in the Eastern Roman Empire had no exclusive term ascribed to them, with both the Latin variant and the Greek innovation Clybenaria being used in historical sources largely because of the Byzantines' heavy Greek influence. Contemporary sources, however, sometimes imply that Clybenaria were in fact a heavier type of cavalrymen, or formed special purpose units. Therefore, either side can be argued, but given the fact that cataphract was used for more than a millennium by various cultures, it stands to reason that different types of fully armoured cavalry in the armies of different nations were assigned this name by Greek and Roman. Scholars not familiar with the native terms for such cavalry, Iranian origins, the reliance on cavalry as a means of warfare in general lies with the ancient inhabitants of the Central Asian steppes in early antiquity who were one of the first peoples to domesticate the horse and pioneered the development of the chariot. Most of these nomadic tribes and wandering pastoralists circa 2000 BC were largely Bronze Age, Iranian populations who migrated from the steppes of Central Asia into the Iranian plateau and Greater Iran from around 1000 BC to 800 BC. Two of these tribes are attested based upon archaeological evidence the Mitanni and the Kassites. Although evidence is scant, they are believed to have raised and bred horses for specific purposes, as is evidenced by the large archaeological record of their use of the chariot in several treatises on the training of chariot horses. The one founding prerequisite towards the development of cataphract cavalry in the ancient Near East Apart from advanced metalworking techniques and the necessary grazing pastures for raising horses, was the evolution of selective breeding and animal husbandry. Cataphract cavalry needed immensely strong and endurant horses, and without selectively breeding horses for muscular strength and hardiness, they would have surely not been able to bear the immense loads of armor and a rider during the strain of battle. The Near East is generally believed to have been the focal point for where this first occurred. The previously mentioned early Indo-Iranian kingdoms and statehoods were to a large degree the ancestors of the northeastern Iranian tribes and the Medians, who would found the first Iranian Empire in 625 BC. It was the Median Empire that left the first written proof of horse breeding around the 7th century BC, being the first to propagate a specific horse breed, known as the Nicene, which originated in the Zagros Mountains for use as heavy cavalry. The Nicene would become renowned in the ancient world and particularly in ancient Persia as the Mount of Nobility. These war horses, sometimes referred to as Nicene charges, were highly sought after by the Greeks, and are believed to have influenced many modern horse breeds. With the growing aggressiveness of cavalry in warfare, protection of the rider and the horse became paramount. This was especially true of peoples who treated cavalry as the basic arm of their military, such as the ancient Persians, including the Medes and the successive Persian dynasties. To a larger extent, the same can said of all the ancient Iranian peoples. Second only to perhaps the bow, horses were held in reverence and importance in these societies as their preferred and mastered medium of warfare, due to an intrinsic link throughout history with the domestication and evolution of the horse. These early riding traditions, which were strongly tied to the ruling caste of nobility, 
now spread throughout the Eurasian steppes and Iranian plateau from around 600 BC and onwards due to contact with the Median Empire's vast expanse across Central Asia, which was the native homeland of the early northeastern Iranian ethnic groups such as the Masajte, Scythians, Sarkas, and Doha. The successive Persian empires that followed the Medes after their downfall in 550 BC took these already long-standing military tactics and horse-breeding traditions and infused their centuries of experience and veterancy from conflicts against the Greek city-states. Babylonians, Assyrians, Scythians, and North Arabian tribes with the significant role cavalry played not only in warfare but everyday life to form a military reliant almost entirely upon armored horses for battle, spread to Central Asia and the Near East. The evolution of the heavily armored horsemen was not isolated to one focal point during a specific era, but rather developed simultaneously in different parts of Central Asia as well as within Greater Iran. Assyria and the Khwarezm region were also significant to the development of cataphract-like cavalry during the first millennium BC. Reliefs discovered in the ancient ruins of Nimrud are the earliest known depictions of riders wearing plaited male shirts composed of metal scales, presumably deployed to provide the Assyrians with a tactical advantage over the unprotected mounted archers of their nomadic enemies, primarily the Arameans, Mushka, North Arabian tribes and the Babylonians. The Tiglath piles are three period, under which the Neo-Assyrian Empire was formed and reached its military peak is believed to have been the first context within which the Assyrian kingdom formed crude regiments of cataphract-like cavalry. Even when armed only with pikes, these early horsemen were effective mounted cavalrymen, but when provided with bows under Sena Cherub, they eventually became capable both of long-range and hand-to-hand -hand combat mirroring the development of dual-purpose cataphract arches by the Parthian Empire during the 1st century BC. Archaeological excavations also indicate that, by the 6th century BC, similar experimentation had taken place among the Iranian peoples inhabiting the Khwarezm region and Aral Sea Basin, such as the Masajte. Daha and Saka, while the offensive weapons of these prototype cataphracts were identical to those of the Assyrians. They differed in that not only the mount but also the head and flanks of the horse were protected by armor. Whether this development was influenced by the Assyrians, as Reuben postulates, or perhaps the Achaemenid Empire, or whether they occurred spontaneously and entirely unrelated to the advances in heavily armored cavalry made in the ancient Near East, cannot be discerned by the archaeological records left by these mounted nomads. The further evolution of these early forms of heavy cavalry in western Eurasia is not entirely clear. Heavily armored riders on large horses appear in 4th century BC frescoes in the northern Black Sea region, notably at a time when the Scythians, who relied on light horse arches, were superseded by the Sarmatians. By the 3rd century BC, light cavalry units were used in most eastern armies. But still only, relatively few states in the east or west attempted to imitate the Assyrian and Chorismian experiments with mailed cavalry, Hellenistic and Roman adoption. The Greeks first encountered cataphracts during the Greco-Persian Wars of the 5th century BC with the Achaemenid Empire. The Ionian Revolt, an uprising against Persian rule in Asia Minor which preluded the first Persian invasion of Greece, is very likely the first Western encounter of cataphract cavalry, and to a degree heavy cavalry in general. The cataphract was widely adopted by the Seleucid Empire. The Hellenistic successes of Alexander the Great's kingdom who reigned over conquered Persia and Asia Minor after his death in 323 BC. The Parthians, who wrested control over their native Persia from the last Seleucid kingdom in the east in 147 BC, were also noted for their reliance upon cataphracts as well as horse arches in battle. The Romans came to know cataphracts during their frequent wars in the Hellenistic east 
During their early encounters, cataphracts remained ineffective against the Roman foot soldier, being decisively defeated in the Battle of Magnesiarum in the Battle of Lucullus with Tigran the Great near Tigrinus Aeta in 69 BC. In 38 BC, the Roman general Publius Ventidius, by making extensive use of slingers, whose long-range weapons proved very effective, defeated the uphill storming Parthian armoured cavalry forcing the Parthians to retreat from all Roman territories occupied since the Battle of Cara. At the time of Augustus, the Greek geographer Strabo considered cataphracts with horse armor to be typical of Armenian, Caucasian, Albanian, and Persian armies, but, according to Plutarch, they were still held in rather low esteem in the Hellenistic world due to their poor tactical abilities against disciplined infantry as well as against more mobile, light cavalry. However, the lingering period of exposure to cataphracts at the eastern frontier as well as the growing military pressure of the Sarmatian lances on the Danube frontier led to a gradual integration of cataphracts into the Roman army. Thus, although armoured riders were used in the Roman army as early as the 2nd century BC, the first recorded deployment in use of cataphracts by the Roman Empire comes in the 2nd century AD, during the reign of Emperor Hadrian, who created the first regular unit of auxiliary male cavalry called the Aelari Galorum A Pananiorum Cataphractator. A key architect in the process was evidently the Roman Emperor Gallienus who created a highly mobile force in response to the multiple threats along the northern and eastern frontier. However, as late as 272 AD, Aurelian's army, completely composed of light cavalry, defeated Zenobia at the Battle of Ima. Proving the continuing importance of mobility on the battlefield, the Romans fought a prolonged and indecisive campaign in the east against the Parthians beginning in 53 BC commencing with the defeat of Marcus Licinius Crassus and his 35,000 legionaries at Cara. This initially unexpected and humiliating defeat for Rome was followed by numerous campaigns over the next two centuries entailing many notable engagements such as the Battle of Cilician Gates, Mount Ginderus, Mark Antony's Parthian Campaign and finally culminating in the bloody Battle of Nisibus in 217 AD, which resulted in a slight Parthian victory, and Emperor Macrinus being forced to concede peace with Parthia. As a result of this lingering period of exposure to cataphracts, by the 4th century, the Roman Empire had adopted a number of exhalations of mercenary cataphract cavalry, such as the Sarmatian auxiliaries. The Romans deployed both native and mercenary units of cataphracts throughout the empire, from Asia Minor all the way to Britain, where a contingent of 5,500 Sarmatian cataphracts were posted in the 3rd century by Emperor Marcus Aurelius. This tradition was later paralleled by the rise of feudalism in Christian Europe in the early Middle Ages and the establishment of the knighthood, particularly during the Crusades. While the Eastern Romans continued to maintain a very active core of cataphracts long after their Western counterparts fell in 476 AD, 